Hello, here's a new one for Blender and Geometry nodes to animate emissive lights along a curve. The result can be seen here, it's a quick EV render, so let's see how to create it. Ok, so we start and remove the default cube, sorry, and then I add a simple closed curve, a circle. Ok, I go to edit mode and then I subdivide the circle one time and then I move around the points by pressing the G key just to find the form, a shape that looks interesting. I speed this up now a bit, it is really just moving around the points. Ok, I stop here so that we can add some geometry by going here to the geometry tab on the curve panel. I increase the depth. Ok, looks nice, some more adjustments and then we are good to go. Ok, I don't know what it is, whatever, now we go ahead and add a new object, an empty object, I select a sphere and then I scale it down so that the diameter is about the same as the one of the first object. Now what I want to do is to let the empty object follow the path, the curve. So with the empty selected, I add an object constraint, which is a follow path. The target is set to the curve and I check the option follow curve. Now I want to animate it so that I can scrub along the timeline and see the empty is moving along the curve, but at the moment nothing happens. To make it work, I have to press this button, Animate Path, and then you can press the spacebar to start the animation and the empty is moving. Ok, now you see the end frame is set to 120, but actually for a round trip along the curve, the empty object needs 100 frames. Let's see why it is like that. When you go to the curve panel, there's an option called Path Animation. It is checked, that's ok, and here you find the frame size. I stick to 100, that's fine. Ok, now we have the animation, we have the curve, but now we need real geometry. So I go ahead and duplicate the curve, the new one I call Mesh, and the original I name Curve. Alright, now I want to convert this curve to a mesh, so I press F3 and search for Convert and select Mesh. At this point the workflow is kind of destructive, because if I modify the curve now, I would have to recreate the mesh. Ok, but I'm sure that I want to stick to this object, so I go ahead and assign a different material, this black one, and then I have to assign a vertex group to the mesh that we will need later on, so I press the tab key to switch to edit mode, then I press A to select all, and then I go to the data tab, vertex group and I give it a name like mesh underscore v group and press assign. You will see why we need that in a moment. Ok, next step is to open a new editor and this is the new geometry nodes editor. Ok, here it is and now I select the mesh, not the curve and then I press the new button. Ok, now you see we have a group input and output. I already explained the basics in this video here. The link is in the description below. Ok, but before I add new nodes, I create a mesh, a simple sphere, that I will instantiate using the geometry nodes. I set the shading to smooth and then I go to edit mode and press S to scale it down. And then I have here this simple emissive material that I assign to the sphere. For this nice glow you have to enable the bloom effect and EV the real time rendering. Ok, now I go back to the geometry nodes and here I want to distribute the new mesh, the sphere, over the curved object and I want to animate it. So let's see, first of all we need a point distribute node. 
Then I bring it between the input and the output, it is connected. And then we don't see the mesh anymore, just the points, we can hide the curve. And then we can start to configure the points. Render points are alright, but I want to set the distance and the density. And for this you can use a so-called Poisson disk. Yeah, it's French. It's a special kind of distribution named after the French mathematician Poisson. Anyway, we can set the distance and the density for the points with that. And the next thing that I will do is to add a point instantiate node. With that I can, yes you guessed it, instantiate objects for the points. Here I can define which object I want to instantiate and I select the sphere. Okay, very nice, but they all have the same size. And I want to randomize this, so I add another node. That is called attribute randomize. The attribute I set to scale. And then we can define a minimum and maximum for the scale value. Okay, we start with this, but I also want to see my curved object, not only the points. So I add a join geometry node to join and display the curve mesh and the points at the same time. You just have to join the point instance and the input geometry, which is the original mesh. Okay, looks quite nice already, but now comes the magic. I want to display the point instances only around the empty object, which is animated, you know? So how can this be done? This is where a new modifier comes into play. That is called Vertex Weight Proximity. I add this modifier to the mesh, and it has to be above the Geometry Nodes modifier, so I move it to the top of the modifier stack. You can define a vertex group. Here select the one that we created, mesh underscore v group, and the target are set then to the empty object. This modifier sets the weights of a vertex group based on the distance between its object and a target. Then it clamps these values in a range between 0 and 1. With these parameters here we can map distances, lowest and highest, to these values 0 and 1. That's a way to tweak the points, it will be more clear in a moment. Ok, I click here to enable again the Geometry Nodes modifier. And then I add a new node between the Randomize and the Point instance. And this is a node to mix attributes of the points. So what is an attribute? Well, for example the scale that we already randomized. But there is another attribute that we used in the Vertex Weight Proximity modifier and this is the Vertex Group. And this I use as a factor and mix it with the scale. And the result is again the scale. So what does it mean? We are multiplying the weight of the vertex group that is set by a proximity modifier, which depends on the distance of the empty object with the scale of the points. And with this, the point size in the end is defined by the position of the empty object. Ok, so we can start the animation and you see the points, the spheres are moving along the curve. I know it's a bit hard to understand in the first place, but you will see once you get used to it, there's so many possibilities that you have now with the feature Geometry Nodes. Of course you can also change the color here of the emissive material, and I will upload the project to my Patreon so that you can download it for free and play around with the parameters. By the way, please support me as my Patreon, this would really help a lot, or join as a member here on YouTube. If you have any questions, add these to the comments and follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on JNM.